Educational Psychology Educational psychology consists of two words, psychology and education. While general psychology is a pure science, educational psychology is its application in the field of education with the aim of socializing man and modifying his behavior. According to Crow and Crow, Educational psychology describes and explains the learning experiences of an individual from birth to old age. Skinner defines educational psychology as that branch of psychology which deals with teaching and learning. According to Stephen, educational psychology is the systematic study of the educational growth and development of a child. According to Jude, Educational psychology is the science which explains the changes that take place in individuals as they pass through the various stages of development. According to Peel, educational psychology is the science of education. Educational psychology is one of the branches of applied psychology concerned with the application of the principles, techniques and other resources of psychology to the solution of the problems confronting the teacher attempting to direct the growth of children towards defined objectives. More specifically, we can say educational psychology is concerned with an understanding of the child, his development, his need and his potentialities. The learning situation including group dynamics and its effect on learning. The learning process, its nature and the ways to make it effective. Stated differently, the central theme of educational psychology is psychology of learning. Psychology of learning is concerned with problems like how do children acquire skills? When is learning more effective? What are the factors that help the learning process? How do we measure the amount of learning? Are there any economic methods of memorizing? Why do we forget? Can memory be improved? Does the study of Sanskrit help the study of Hindi? Psychology helps the teacher to get answers to these questions. It tells us that learning becomes more effective if factors like motivation and interest are taken into consideration by every teacher. The knowledge of psychology has helped the teacher in modifying his or her approach to the teaching learning process. The study of educational psychology has brought about changes in the approaches to education and therefore we have child-centered education. Psychological principles are used in the formulation of curriculum for different stages. Attempts are made to provide subjects and activities in the curriculum which are in conformity with the needs of the students, the developmental characteristics, learning patterns and also needs of the society. Nature of Educational Psychology Following are the important characteristics of the nature of educational psychology. It is an applied branch of fundamental psychology. It combines two fields, that is education and psychology. It is the scientific study of human behavior in educational situations. It is concerned with these factors, principles and techniques which relate to the various aspects of a child's growth and development. It is concerned with learning situations and process by which learning can be more efficient and effective. Educational psychology draws heavily from various branches of psychology, biology, sociology and anthropology. Educational psychology is not as exact as natural sciences since the human behavior cannot be predicted exactly because it is dynamic. Educational psychology is a science of education dealing primarily with how, when and what of education. It is not a normative science as it is not concerned with the values of education and does not concern itself with what ought to be. It only describes what it is. It is an applied positive science. While psychology deals with the behavior of an individual in all walks of life, educational psychology limits its dealings with the behavior of the pupil in relation to educational environment. It does not concern with what and why of education. It gives the necessary knowledge and skill, technical guidance for giving education to the pupil in a satisfactory way. The Scope of Educational Psychology The five major areas covered by educational psychology are the learner, the learning process, the learning situation, the teaching situation, evaluation of learning performance, the teacher, the learner. Educational psychology acquaints us with the need of knowing the learner and deals with the techniques of knowing him well. Following are the topics studies included in it. The innate abilities and capabilities of the individual and their measurements, the overt, covert, conscious as well as unconscious behavior of the learner, the characteristics of his growth and development at each stage beginning from childhood to adulthood. 
the learning process after knowing the learner and deciding what learning experiences are to be provided the emerging problem is to help the learner in acquiring these learning experiences with ease and confidence hence it deals with the nature of learning and how it takes place and contains the topics such as laws principles and theories of learning remembering and forgetting perceiving concept formation thinking reasoning problem solving transfer of training ways and means of effective learning etc learning situation it also deals with the environment factors and learning situation which comes midway between the learner and the teacher topics like classroom climate group dynamic techniques and aids which facilitate learning evaluation techniques and practices guidance and counseling etc which help in the smooth functioning of the teaching learning process teaching situation it suggests the techniques of teaching it also helps in deciding what learning situation should be provided by the teacher to the learner according to his mental and physical age his previous knowledge and interest levels by describing the learner's characteristics what teaching aids are appropriate for the particular subject can be decided evaluation of learning performance the main objective of education is all round development of the learner it includes cognitive affective and psychomotor aspect of personality educational psychology suggests various tools and techniques for assessment and evaluation such as performance tests oral tests and written tests it does not stop at measurement only after the testing results of the test are analyzed causes for both performance backwardness in any aspect of development is corrected by guidance and counseling in study habits examination techniques and learning styles these are analyzed and the learner is helped so that he can overcome the difficulties the teacher educational psychology emphasizes the need of knowing the self for a teacher to play his role properly in the process of education it throws light on the essential personality traits interests aptitudes and characteristics of effective teaching etc so as to inspire help teacher handle the stress conflict and anxiety by giving insight into their own personality functions of educational psychology to provide a thorough knowledge of the nature of the child to provide an understanding of the nature aims and purposes of education to be familiar with the technical vocabulary and to further our understanding and an appreciation of the scientific procedures by which the data of educational psychology are obtained to provide a significant knowledge of a developmental process with particular emphasis upon the promotion guidance and control of mental and moral aspects to provide an understanding of the principles governing learning together with knowledge of the techniques for guiding improvement in learning and their application to the practical problems in the classroom to present the theories underlying the measurement and evaluation of mental abilities aptitudes achievements interest and personality organization to present the principles and conclusions regarding the prevention of all types of maladjustments together with the approved practices for achieving satisfactory adjustments to inculcate in the prospective teacher the realization that the most essential purpose of the teaching is that the student learn growth and development can you recall events from your early childhood say the second or third year you might have a few vague and blurred memories about your childhood the experiences of that period from the basis of the type of person you are today how human beings grow change and adjust themselves to the environment is the focus of development and behavior as also the concepts principles and theories of growth and development the human being is never static from conception to death he undergoes changes there are progressive changes in response to environmental conditions his body organs and psychological functions shows the curves of capacity and achievement as well as slow erosion and decay cognitive abilities develop and then degenerate basic metabolism reaches a peak then declines the endocrine functions flourishes and then fades there is a rise and fall of physical energy in terms of both the force and speed of action with age in fact no organ or function of human beings has yet been found which is independent of age determinants at the time of conception a child has genetic potentialities that are partly predictable and partly unpredictable 
These genetic potentialities are determined by the nature of his biological inheritance. Still there is room for a tremendous range in the ways he uses the genetic potentialities, depending upon the environment that may help or hinder the development of those potentialities. The meaning of growth and development. The terms growth and development are often used interchangeably. Actually, they are conceptually different. Neither growth nor development takes place all by itself. Growth refers to quantitative changes in size, which includes physical changes in height, weight, size, internal organs, etc. As an individual develops, old features like baby fat, hair and teeth, etc. disappear and new features like facial hair are acquired. When maturity comes, the second set of teeth, primary and secondary sex characteristics, etc. appear. Similar changes occur in all aspects of the personality. During infancy and childhood, the body steadily becomes larger, taller and heavier. To designate this change, the term growth is used. Growth involves changes in body proportions as well as in overall stature and weight. The term growth thus indicates an increase in bodily dimensions. However, the rate of growth differs from one part of the body to the other. Development, by contrast, refers to qualitative changes taking place simultaneously with quantitative changes of growth. It may be defined as a progressive series of orderly, coherent changes. The term progressive signifies that changes are directional, that they lead forward rather than backward. The terms orderly and coherent suggest that a definite relationship between the changes taking place and those that precede or will follow them. Development represents change in an organism from its origin to its death, but more particularly the progressive changes that take place from origin to maturity. Thus. Development may be explained as the series of overall changes in an individual due to the emergence of modified structure and functions that are the outcome of the interactions and exchanges between the organism and its environment.